life in the oceans is always more terrifying than life on land. From the prehistoric depths to the modern seas, creatures below the waves have always carried an aura of nightmare, vast, alien, and merciless. Even during the age of dinosaurs, when titans roamed the continents, the most horrifying beasts were not on land, but in the oceans. It's actually hard to find a time in Earth's history when you'd be safer in the water. But there was one brief window, a moment so ancient it predates the dinosaurs, when your best chance at survival really was beneath the surface. The world before dinosaurs. We travel back over 259 million years to a time geologists call the Lopingian Epoch, the final chapter of the Permian period. Earth then was unrecognizable. Days were only 22 hours long because the moon orbited closer to our planet. The landmasses we know, Africa, the Americas, Asia, Antarctica, were all fused together into one colossal supercontinent, Pangaea. To the east, fragments of land formed primitive islands, Siberia, Kazakhstan, and North China in one cluster, South China and Southeast Asia in another. Even Turkey, Iran, and Tibet were isolated isles surrounded by two ancient seas, the Tethys and the Paleotethys. But west of Pangaea stretched something far greater, a single endless ocean called Panthalassa, a super-ocean covering more than 60% of the planet. It was twice the size of today's Pacific. Imagine that, an ocean so vast it could swallow continents whole. You'd think such a monstrous sea would be crawling with horrors. But surprisingly, Panthalassa was relatively calm. For a brief moment, the water was the safe place. Calm before the storm. Of course, safe is a relative term. The seas still held predators. Sharks had already been around for over 200 million years, and some had evolved into bizarre forms. One of the most famous was the Helicoprion, an eight-meter shark with a circular saw of teeth coiled inside its lower jaw. But by the late Permian, that nightmare had already gone extinct, leaving behind smaller cousins like Hybidus and Orthocanthus, each no larger than a human. Even the once terrifying sea scorpions, giant arthropods that ruled earlier oceans, were fading away. Marine life was still recovering from the Capitanian mass extinction, a cataclysm two million years earlier that wiped out much of the planet's oceanic biodiversity. More deadly, in fact, than the asteroid that would one day kill the dinosaurs. So, yes... The seas were quiet, almost eerily quiet, but that tranquility only made the contrast on land far more horrifying, because up above the waves the earth was ruled by monsters. The land of monsters, while life in the oceans was struggling to recover, life on land had adapted in the most horrifying way imaginable. The Capitanian extinction had wiped out the old rulers of Earth, clearing the stage for something new. And what rose to fill that void were not gentle creatures, but apex predators, evolved for domination. The forests and plains of the late Permian were ruled by beasts unlike anything before or after. This was the age of the Therapsids, ancient relatives of mammals. They weren't quite reptiles and not yet mammals either. They were something in between, a terrifying evolutionary experiment, and among them, one group stood above all others, the Gorgonopsids, the Gorgon faces. Discovered in 1876, the Gorgonopsids were so nightmarish that scientists named them after the Gorgons from Greek mythology, the snake-haired monsters whose gaze could turn you to stone. Their design was simple yet devastating. Deep-set eyes, long, narrow skulls, a mouth lined with blade-like teeth, and two enormous curved saber canines that could rip through flesh like butter. They were among the first creatures on Earth to evolve saber teeth, long before the famous saber-toothed cats of the Ice Age. Early Gorgonopsids were small, no larger than a cat, but as the Permian went on they grew, and grew, 
until they became the dominant predators of the planet. And towering above them all was one species so deadly, its very name echoes through prehistory, in Ostransvia. At over 3.5 meters long and weighing nearly half a ton, it was the largest land predator of the late Permian, a creature comparable in size to a tiger or a bear. Its limbs were powerful and built for speed. Its jaws were armed with saber teeth that stretched 15 centimeters long, curved, serrated, and terrifyingly efficient. But Inostran Savia wasn't alone. Across the globe, countless other Gorgonopsid species dominated their ecosystems. In Russia, smaller hunters like Pravoslav Livia and Sauroctonis prowled the plains. In Africa, an entire family of massive Gorgonopsids, the Rubidgynae, evolved independently. The Rubidgynae were even thicker, more muscular, and just as terrifying. Their skulls were enormous, up to 15% of their entire body length, and reinforced with bone ridges built for head-on collisions. Their serrated teeth were designed for one thing, cutting through hide and muscle. Together, these beasts ruled the continents. By this point in history, it truly was the planet of the Gorgonopsids, where no creature, no matter how large, could escape their jaws. And just when you thought the late Permian couldn't get any deadlier, it did. Shadows of new predators. As the Gorgonopsids ruled the land, evolution was already crafting their successors, creatures smarter, faster, and far more adaptable. From the same ancestral line came the Therocephalians, beast heads. They looked similar to their Gorgon ancestors, but their skulls were lighter, their teeth more complex, and some species showed signs of advanced brains, capable of more coordinated hunting behavior. And one disturbing adaptation began to appear. Venom. Certain therocephalians, like Eucumbersia, had strange cavities in their skulls, structures many paleontologists believe held venom glands. If true, these would be the first venomous land predators in Earth's history. The world turns against life. But while evolution was busy creating new monsters, the planet itself began to turn hostile again. Volcanoes in what is now Siberia erupted with a fury never seen before. Massive fissures, stretching thousands of kilometers, spewed molten rock, ash, and toxic gases into the sky. This cataclysm, known as the Siberian Traps, unleashed enough lava to cover the entire United States several kilometers deep. But it wasn't the lava alone that killed life. It was what came after, the atmosphere filled with carbon dioxide, choking the planet in a greenhouse nightmare. Temperatures soared, acid rain fell, the oceans became acidic and anoxic, unable to support marine life. And so began the Great Dying, the worst mass extinction event in Earth's history. The Great Dying, over a few hundred thousand years, a blink in geological time, over 90% of marine life and 70% of all land species vanished. Coral reefs dissolved, forests collapsed into wastelands, entire food chains disintegrated. Even the mighty Gorgonopsids, the apex predators of their time, couldn't escape. Their prey vanished, temperatures spiked, and the oxygen levels in the air plummeted. The last of the Gorgonopsids, in Nostransavia, died out somewhere in Russia, its reign brought to a silent, suffocating end. For millions of years afterward, Earth was a barren wasteland, a dead planet wrapped in heat and ash. After the apocalypse, but life always finds a way. From the few survivors, small burrowing creatures related to the Therocephalians, evolution began again. These survivors would give rise to a new group, the Cynodonts, the direct ancestors of mammals, and eventually, us. The age of monsters ended, but their legacy lived on, written in our own DNA. Every heartbeat, every breath, every hair on your body carries the whisper of a world that once belonged to the Gorgonopsids. A world where saber-toothed reptiles ruled the continents, and death came with a roar and a smile of blades. Silence after the storm.
For thousands of years after the great dying, earth was silent. The forests were gone, the skies were pale and empty, even the oceans, once alive with color, were dark, acidic, and still. Only a few creatures survived, the desperate, the small, the hidden. Burrowing reptiles, insect-like scavengers, and a handful of strange furry relatives of the Therocephalians, they lived in the shadows of extinction, and from those shadows life slowly began to rebuild. It was not the strongest that survived, but the most adaptable. The lesson of the Permian was written in blood and fire. Evolution favors resilience over power. Rebirth of a world. As volcanic activity slowed, the planet began to heal. Rains washed the poison from the air. New plants, tougher and more efficient, spread across the land. From the ashes of the Permian, a new age began the Triassic, and with it, a new generation of creatures rose to fill the void. Some evolved into the first dinosaurs, others into the ancestors of mammals. The world that had once belonged to the Gorgonopsids was reborn, reshaped, renewed, but never the same again. Every ecosystem, every predator, every prey species that came after was a reflection of the ancient struggle that started in the Permian. The monsters were gone but their echoes shaped everything that followed. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this journey into the land's evolution, please like and subscribe for more stories about the strange and beautiful world we share. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the unknown.